Herman on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Herman. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing great. Check this out. They, they, they call me the Black Tom Likas. Who calls you the Black Tom Likas? All my friends. Really? Yeah. Tell us why. Well, because I give, I give them the information that they need. Like, I, I got about 12, I got 12 11 guys I, I talk to. Them. What kinds of things do you tell them? How, how to handle women, how, how to handle themselves, brown women. Really? Yeah. Now, do you get more ass than a toilet seat? Hey, man, I don't, I don't mess with women with, with no period. <laughs> you know why? Why? I don't worry about knocking them up. I don't worry about nothing. But, well, that's true. So when, when I'm on stage, I, I want it now. <laughs> I got that way, 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 no, 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 no thing between their legs to take off. Uh, okay. And uh, let me ask you this, Herman. I'm just curious. Uh, when you, you, These women, how old are they? What are their ages? I got, I got one 35. I got one 30. I got one 20, 28. 28. I, got, I, had, I had one 21 last week. Really? I had to get rid of her. Why? She got on my nerves. She got on your nerves. If you, 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 you go on Herman's nerves, I, could, I cut you loose. Yeah, that's right. You dumped that bitch. There you go. I, I, I've been making. I, I, I've been twenty years in Air Force. I've been in fifteen countries. I know how to make love twelve languages. Is that so? I know how to have sex in twelve languages. Yeah, you don't knock these chicks up, do you? No, I don't. I can't. I can't knock them by the behind. I take me back in the ship and one. Oh, really? Right. I can't. You know what? This, 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 this lady told me one time, uh, Herman. I need talking very important. I said, "What is it?" I missed my period. I said, okay, I'll be over your house. I went to the house. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I had a life second me, baby. I can't make nothing. She says, uh, you what? Yeah, I had a life second me. She said, okay. The next day, she got, the period came on. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. I know it. Weird, huh? I know. They all want your money, Herman. Hey, they, 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 they can't get it for me. You know why? Why? I never be a sugar daddy. I never be a sugar daddy. Well, never. Very nice. So you were Tom Likens before there was Tom Likens. I guess I was. Wow. I used to be married. And what happened? I was married six or seven years. My lady pissed me off. I said, you know what? I don't need this I'm, I left. I left last month. That was last month? Yeah, I've been going a month. And then, uh, so were you already banging these chicks before you left, uh, left there, or what happened? Yeah. Well, my lady said she got tired of catching me. Oh, she started catching you doing it on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So you said, who needs this? And you got out. That's it. Now you're getting more ass than a toilet. See, more butts than an ashtray. There you go. From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is. Tom oh, Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know, companies have until January 31st to get you your W-2 form or your 1099 form if you did any work this year. And for me, doing my taxes is... It's a train wreck. And the reason is because every year I have many employers. Now, not only did I work part of last year for Westwood One and part of it for CBS Radio, I also get 1099 forms from all the people I do other work for, like when I make an appearance and I get paid for it, or when I read a commercial. Each one of those people is considered an employer, or I'm considered an independent contractor, so I get either a W-2 form or a 1099 form, and I have to try to track down all those forms. I still don't have all of them. And one of the ones that was missing was my annual 1099 form from none other than 
CBS Radio, which has finally arrived. It was sent. <laughs> I hope somebody's going to fix this because unless you, I, I have mentioned this off the air and nobody's done anything about it. So maybe if I say something on the air, that will get this done. I've got a 1099 form here. Here's what they did. Instead of sending it to my home or to my agent or to my accountant or somebody for whom it would be relevant, they actually sent it to one of the ad agencies that I do outside work for. <laughs> so they put my name on it, and they have the address of an ad agency, and they mailed it to this ad agency. I won't say which agency it is. It's an agency that has a couple of very prominent accounts, names you would know, okay? Commercials you've heard. So it has my name, and then it has the address of the ad agency in Santa Monica, and they mailed my 1099 form to an ad agency. So I was supposed to have this on January 31st. Instead, here we are in the uh, in the middle of March, and the only thing they, the, the only reason this arrived is because Dean J. D'Amelio happened to be in the office of one Jack Silver and saw it sitting on his desk. And it got to me. Now, uh, just so we can make a note of this for the folks of the uh, accounting department at CBS, I don't live at an ad agency in Santa Monica. I live in the Hollywood Hills. If any of you need my address, please call me immediately so we can rectify uh, the, the situation. Because for some reason, the people at CBS think I live at an ad agency in Santa Monica. We're lucky this thing even came back. I mean, the people at CBS don't know that I don't not work for an ad agency in Santa Monica. For Christ's sake, I work for CBS. So. One day, it's the people of KFWB and KNX. The next day, it's the accounting department. We've got to straighten this place out. We're working on it. We're straightening this stuff out. This is not my address. They did this last year, too. I wasn't even working for CBS yet. I was just doing, like, some commercials and stuff for CBS. <laughs> and they sent my uh, 1099 form last year. They sent it to the same ad agency. It was late last year. I don't know. What do you do about this stuff? I don't know what to do about it. In other news, Selma Hayek, once the unrequited love of my life, until she got married and looked like a sow when she got pregnant, says here that she is planning a huge party to celebrate her relationship with her partner, partner. I thought she married this guy. I thought she did. Francois-Henri Pinot. That's his name. Planning a huge party to celebrate her relationship with him because she doubts they will ever marry. <laughs> Hayek, it says here, recently gave birth to the couple's first child, daughter Valentina. And it says she is so blissfully happy with her new family, there is no need for her to walk down the aisle. I knew she was the girl for me. Except for the kid thing. It says here, the actress says, quote, I don't have a need for marriage. You want to grow old with someone. You want to have a partner and to have children. Well, everyone doesn't want that, so we all have those things. Oh, we have all those things, she said. Some people need the commitment. Maybe we'll just make the party. That's what she said. <laughs> so Selma Hayek says she doesn't have a need for marriage. Now, what does she have a need for? Well, she needed the uh, billionaire sperm to create this child. And I imagine he's kicking in a few bucks to support the child and, and maybe Selma on top of whatever she makes making movies. I'm just imagining. 
But uh, Salma Hayek now says she has no need for marriage. Tom Like has made that statement a long time ago. I have no need for marriage. And uh, as you can see, public opinion is mounting against marriage. I mean, Selma Hayek uh, makes uh, her own living. She does not need to be married to get money. Although marrying a billionaire uh, means you're going to have even more money. That's, that's what it would mean. But she says she doesn't need that. And I guess because she makes good living, that might be the reason. I don't know. But, um, you know, again, who needs marriage? Children. Children need marriage. Children benefit, I believe, at least in this country, from their parents being married to each other. By having one last name, no hyphen, please. By the way, some of those hyphenated children are now finding their way into adulthood. And uh, one of them is a hockey player. There's a hockey player. He's a goaltender. I saw him the other day. Cannot remember his name. You know why? Too effing long. I cannot remember his name. A goaltender came into a game about a week or two ago against the Los Angeles Kings. Last name hyphenated. What happens when two hyphens marry each other? Where's that going to go? <laughs> Out of control. But, um, no, I mean, the, uh, the argument uh, continues, and uh, the fact is, that it's really children and secondarily women who benefit uh, from uh, from marriage. Did you see the woman? Uh, the, this has nothing to do with marriage. It has to do with child support. Did you see the woman in Augusta, Georgia? This was a great story. Did you see the woman in Augusta, Georgia? Who uh, realized when her kid was age two that her husband was not the father of the kid. It was this other guy. She was stooping. But uh, the guy who was paying the child support uh, was never informed that there might be some doubt about this. For years, he was not informed about this. And finally, somehow, I don't know how the argument came up. I saw this story. Uh, somehow the argument came up and a DNA test was done and they found that, uh, sure enough, uh, the uh, schlep, the schmuck who's been paying child support all these years to this woman, Turns out he's not the father. Not only that, turns out uh, upon another DNA test that the husband is the father. So I guess the husband had no idea that the wife was getting child support from this guy who thought he was the father, was told he was the father, and he's been paying without a DNA test all these years. So the judge in the case not only fix the paternity so that the proper person is now the father. The judge in the case at Augusta, Georgia, actually may... How often do we hear this story? The woman and her husband I now have to pay back about $19,000 in child support to this poor schmuck who's been paying under the belief that this is his kid. And that ought to be happening more often. You know, it really pisses me off that when guys find out they're not the father, after they've been lied to, believe the lie, and then started paying, in in 99.9999% percent of the cases, and that judge at best will say, all right, you don't have to pay anymore, but you're not getting any money back. It's like, why not? If that guy was lied to, if he was defrauded, why shouldn't he get every penny back? So in a man bites dog story, I mean, it made the news. In a man bites dog story, the guy in Augusta, Georgia, is actually uh, supposedly going to be repaid about $19,000 that he's paid in child support over the years. And hopefully, finally, the worm is starting to turn. These stories just continue to piss me off, and uh, I know they must be pissing you off. And these are the reasons you want to keep your sperm to yourself. These are the reasons you don't want to be uh, offering to impregnate people. These are the reasons you don't want to be getting married to people and have, having kids with them and ending up having to pay for years and years and years. I mean, these are all the reasons I've avoided it. <laughs> I mean, let me just say this. 
and I'm not just saying it as an act of bravado or just to be obnoxious. Maybe there's some of that in there. But I'm also saying it because it's true. I was wandering my 20 acres in Santa Barbara County this weekend. And literally, as I walked that very large space, I was thinking about all the women who tried to pick my pocket over the years and realizing that had I let them, this wouldn't be 20 acres, it might be 19 acres, or 18, or 17, or 10, or 5, or half an acre. Maybe I'd have half an acre in Rancho Santa Margarita, or Rancho Cucamonga, or Norco, rather than having what I have. Maybe I'd be living in an apartment. As I walk my land... And it is land, boys. This is, it isn't even what you would call property or your backyard. I jokingly refer to something as my backyard. It's like 12 acres, my backyard. And as I was walking through it over the weekend, I'm saying to myself, I'm remembering the, the women along the way who wanted me to spend that money on them. I told you I had one person I was involved with. Now, you know how I feel about kids. I had one person I was involved with who actually said the following. She said, as she was leaving, and I don't even have a kid to remember you by. As I was sending her out the door, I don't even have a kid to remember you by. That's what she said. I don't even have a kid to remember you by. And, of course, you know, the kid would not be the only reminder. It would be that... Big fat check she'd be getting every month. That would be the reminder. And so many of you uh, suckers out there have uh, agreed to impregnate women, give them money, whatever. And uh, I want to dedicate my ranch in Santa Barbara County. I want to dedicate it. To all you broads out there who've been involved with me over the years and who tried to stick your hand in the cookie jar. This ranch is for you, girls. Because uh, the reason I own it today is because I stopped each and every one of you from getting your hand to the till. From stepping into the vault. I prevented you from doing it. This property is a testament to my stopping all of you from getting your hands on my cashola. And it's a reminder to you boys that you should be not be handing out the cash either directly or indirectly. That means you should not be buying things for women. You should not be buying them gifts. You should not be giving them checks. You should not be giving them your sperm, which eventually will be a gift that will keep on giving as you have to keep on paying for these little crumb crunchers you're creating. With these little slots that uh, really you just want them to, you know, for a good crack in the ass and uh, a good hump and pump. Uh, and, and many of you guys stupidly are paying these women for years. Seems like your entire lives. The great thing about being my age and having no children is that I've got two fantastic places to live. And that is as much a function of my not giving money to women and saving and investing, something women absolutely hate doing, as it is making good money in the radio business. I'm going to tell you that right now. But you boys would be a lot better off financially if you would listen to what I'm saying. Unfortunately, many of you don't, and you're going to find out the hard way when you're putting antifreeze in my car. You're going to find out the hard way when I've got a little fender bender and I need you to take out a ding. You're going to find out the hard way when I need my air conditioning repaired and you are up on the roof putting free on in. Okay? That is when you're going to find out that I was right. It's true, isn't it? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. In the industry I'm working in, I've been in it two years. I've already been promoted to the top of the level of where I can be after two years because I put that hard work in, and I didn't pay for everything. You know what I mean? I did it the way, the Tom Likas way, the man way. It's the Tom Likas Show. The 
Tom like his show. I was telling you this story. I'm not making it up. Here it is. This from a newspaper called the Augusta Chronicle. Judge David Roper said he felt badly for Kenneth Samuels. When he learned the child he had fathered for 11 years wasn't his. Justice was also shortchanged, the judge said, because Mr. Samuels had been paying child support all of those years. Last month, Judge Roper ruled that Jamie Hope, the child's mother, and Oba Wallace, the child's biological father, would have to repay Mr. Samuels $14,460 in child support he had paid since 1997. It says here, such an order is unusual but not unique. It shouldn't be unique or unusual. It should be business as usual. Sandra Jarrett of this is the Georgia State Child Support Recovery Unit said, we have seen it happen before. We've probably seen a lunar eclipse before, you know, but it shouldn't be happening that infrequently. Says here, she claims, Ms. Jarrett, usually there is no intent to defraud. Now the woman's just a slut. It says here, mothers who have had relationships with more than one man might not know who the biological father is without a DNA test. Well, then why tell people the name of a person until you've had a DNA test? You sluts. Says here, Ms. Jarrett estimated 40% to 45% of their new cases are filed by a custodial parent who never married. And a DNA test is requested to establish paternity. In Richmond, Columbia, and Burke counties of Georgia, Child Support Services helps about 30,000 families, it says here. Across Georgia, 500,000 families are assisted. In Mr. Samuel's case, it began April 22, 1997, when Ms. Hope, that's MS period, Ms. Hope opened a child support services case that named Mr. Samuels the father of her child. Mr. Samuels said he never had any reason to doubt the child was his, because he had no idea he was banging a slut. He signed the birth certificate, and he consented to an order to pay child support. Mr. Wallace told the judge at a hearing last summer that he heard from different people that the child looked like him. Mr. Wallace is uh, the husband. The child called him Daddy when she saw him in town, Mr. Wallace said. Mr. Wallace said he told Ms. Hope he would take care of the child financially if he was the biological father. They decided to get a DNA test last summer, Mr. Wallace said. The DNA test proved Mr. Wallace was the biological father. That's the guy she's with now. And he filed a court petition to legally establish paternity. The case was assigned to Judge Roper, who had no problem with signing the order that established legal paternity. But he said he was troubled by the position in which it left Mr. Samuel. The judge questioned Mr. Wallace and Ms. Hope about when they first suspected Mr. Wallace was the biological father. Both eventually admitted it was around the time the child was two. Two. Mm -hmm. Kid is now practically a teenager. I've never heard of this gentleman until this year, and I never knew that she was seeing anyone else, Mr. Samuels told the judge last summer. <laughs> How stupid was she to get the DNA test? Holy cow. Says here, Ms. Hope told the judge she wanted a paternity test in 1997 when the baby was born, but that Mr. Samuels declined. He denied that. Judge Roper told Ms. Hope, you swore that he was the father when you took out a child support action. 
He said he considered that action fraudulent. Yay! And ordered Ms. Hope to repay Mr. Samuels the $14,460 he had paid in child support payments. In February, Judge Roper ruled Mr. Wallace was liable to Mr. Samuels for the back child support, too. Judge Roper said in explaining his ruling that once paternity is established, a father can be required to pay back support to the time of birth. Since Mr. Wallace's paternity was established, he was responsible for the child support, not just now, but since the birth in 1997 and responsible for repaying Mr. Samuels. Yes. Ms. Jarrett, she's with the child support Nazis, said that when a child support case is opened, the man identified as a child's father can request a DNA test. Isn't that nice? If the test comes back negative, the case against that man is closed. If it is positive, then paternity is established at child support services, works to obtain a court order for child support. Of course, what it doesn't say here is that sometimes they don't try all that hard to find the guy. Or to inform him of what's going on, they just start uh, garnishing his wages. Says here, and we're talking Georgia now, a man can also petition the court directly to request a legal determination of paternity, which is what Mr. Wallace did. Paternity establishes who is responsible for the financial support of a child. If a father also desires visitation rights, he must legitimize the child too, Mr. I'm sorry, Judge Roper said. Although child support services cannot help with visitation issues, the office can refer parents to mediation. So you see here, finally, man bites dog, and a guy who has been paying child support because he has been defrauded is actually getting over $14,000 back. It doesn't happen this way. This is what ought to happen all the time, don't you think? Tom, 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 Tom. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. This is my Sunday theory. It's delicious as soon as you get it. Leave it out in the sun for a few hours and see if you still want to eat it, because that's what happens to a hot chick over time, okay? It becomes a big mess, okay? It gets all over you, gets in your hair, it's a mess, it's on your clothes, and you don't know what to do about it anymore, you know, just... Throw everything away. Just don't do it. Just break. If you have a girlfriend that you feel like you love her so much, dump her. Dump her today. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Sam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you, Tom? I'm doing great. Good. Um, well, I just wanted to comment on the article. Um, I just I think that Mr. Samuels is the biggest idiot in this whole matter because he was offered to take a DNA test in 1997 and then he didn't take it. Well, that's what she says. He says that's not true. Oh. Well, I just think I I'm I'm, I'm just a little floored. I can't believe that. Um, anybody would pay child support without doing that first. I do believe there are people who people who don't know their rights, or there are guys. Believe it or not, as, as many jerks as we are, guys, uh, there are guys who quote unquote want to do the right thing. And so, if if a guy is told uh, you're the father of my kid, there are guys who just say, "Okay, tell me where to send the check." I don't know. I just think that that's really stupid. <laughs> well, I think it's stupid, but I also know there are people who don't even know who the vice president is, much less what their rights are in a legal situation like that. I know, but we've had the technology for at least since 1995. So, yeah, But having technology doesn't mean everybody knows how it's used or that it's available or what their rights are. You know, you're assuming a lot. I don't know the IQs of the people involved here. Well, that's true. Let's face it. This child was born in 1997 and there's $14,000 worth of child support. I don't think we're talking about rich people. And I'm guessing we're not talking about yeah, bright people no. either. Well, I don't know. 
I haven't seen the people. I haven't spoken to them. But uh, 1400 a year is about $120 a month. Well, it just seems to me like, you know, it's, it almost falls on the responsibility of the legal system to ensure this. Well, here's what I believe. You know, we, we, you I know, believe we, I believe you should. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a state back east, and I can't remember if it's Kentucky or Tennessee. There's a state back east right now that is making it mandatory that before you put a man's name on a birth certificate, that you got DNA evidence that he's the father, or you can't put his name on there. That's the way it should be. That's everywhere. the way it should be. That's the way it should be everywhere. But of course, all of the uh, the poverty pimps out there and the uh, child support Nazis. Uh, they want to uh, make sure they keep their jobs, and one of the ways they keep their jobs is by chasing innocent people down and taking their paychecks. Well, maybe maybe this woman didn't know who the father was at the beginning, and she was just trying to... Well, how to... about, instead of putting a man's name down, how about you say, I don't know who the father is. Well, it could be any too. number of people. I guess so. But then you wouldn't get the monthly check. But that's my point, and the judge rightly pointed out that this was fraud. And you don't see judges saying that very often. Well, yeah, that it is fraud. But it's done all the time, and women get away with it. Well, they shouldn't. It's not. It's just not fair. I, I have to also say to you, this is the first time I've ever called in, and I accidentally turned on the radio station and heard you, like, last year, and I was like, oh, my God, who is this guy? I just wanted to kick you in the teeth. I, I hated it, hated it. And then um, I kind of got hooked on it and started listening to it more and more. And um, you kind of make some sense. So I just have to say that. I'm glad uh, you feel that way. But that's what generally happens. At first, people are outraged at the things I say. But if they keep listening, eventually they see it all makes sense. Yeah, you make sense. You're kind of mean sometimes, but yeah, well, you make sense. I like that you're telling people not to have kids and to wait and you know not not get off track. You know, stay stay in school and make money, be educated. All these things. This is good advice. Yeah, I mean, if you can't afford to have children, you shouldn't be having children. Yeah. Well, we don't need to. We don't need any more children. We have enough people. Well, I, yeah, I. You know what? I'm not about taking people's rights away. What I am about is telling people, uh, you know, there's other things you can't afford. You just don't get them. Okay. I mean, we'd all love to drive a Lamborghini, and the reason we don't have Lamborghinis is because we can't afford them. Yet babies, we don't worry about how we're going to pay for that. We don't see babies the way we see a Lamborghini. But in reality, they have more in common than most people think. <laughs> That's true. Because yeah, if you can't true. afford one, you shouldn't get one. Yeah. I I agree with you 100%. I'm a social worker, and I see all kinds of really sad stories all the time. And it would be better if people took a little bit of this advice. I agree with you. Thank you, Sam. All right, thanks. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Ashley on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Long time, first time. Thank you. You know, I totally agree with you 100%. Not only should the, the judge shouldn't have even ordered this woman to pay the 14000 it should have been 14000 plus the emotional damage caused this poor guy. You know, it should have been more money than than was awarded because we had a friend that went through this whole thing. Eleven years he raised this kid. About six years into the kid's life, the mom split, right? And he raises the kid. Come, the mom comes back later, telling him that this kid is not even his. It's horrible. So now he feels like this, you know, the, the guys, they want to do the right thing. They want to be the dad. They want to take care of this kid. And, you know, whether it's emotionally or financially. And these stupid women, if they are that stupid and that, as you say, a slut, to not even know who the child's father is, then, I mean, why do we keep rewarding horrible, dumb behavior in this country? 
you hear me, Tom? I'm listening. You know, it drives me crazy. I'm a teacher. I'm a fourth grade teacher out of, you know, I'd say I have 30 kids in my classroom and probably half of them come from single parent households. And amazingly enough, after 12 years of teaching, the ones that come from single parent households are always the ones who have the behavior issues. They're always the ones that don't have enough attention. You know, they don't have a father figure and they give me problems at work. It's like these, these people, they have no clue how selfish they are. Well, and then you have women who can't figure out why there aren't any good men to marry. Where yeah. are all the good men? They love saying we're all the good men. I'll tell you where the good men are. The good men are not giving them your their money. That's it. We are not giving these women our money. We're not handing it over. We're not doing it. You know, to, uh, that's another thing. You know, I've listened to you a long time, and I always tell any of my girlfriends or any of the girls that I know who say that, oh, there's not any good men left. You know what I always say to them? If, you, if you're looking for a good man, why don't you try making yourself a good girl for a good man? And amazingly enough, you might find a good man out there if you're working on yourself how to be a good girlfriend or a girl, good wife or whatever. Well, there's plenty of good men out there, but if you read the uh, statistics, the average American male is getting married now at 28 years old, the oldest age in the history of the United States. And that's too young. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, by, by the way, at one time it was much younger. But I'm telling you, that also averages in uh, people who will never get married. Or people who get married at 40 or 50. And, and, and the bottom line is that a lot of guys have figured out that women are getting married for money. To get our money. You know, my husband and I, uh, we got married. He was 40 years old and I was 24. We have the best marriage, you know, he's a wonderful father, uh, you know, he's kind of sowed his oats, he was ready to settle down, we're both educated, we're both in our career, we have a two-year-old daughter who we love raising, we have the financial ability, the resources, everything's cool. But these, you know, and the young guys, I wish that every young guy could listen to you and wear the condom, dudes. <laughs> Don't get... You know, well, it goes beyond wearing the condom. There are guys who volunteer to impregnate women, or oh, they, that they, is horrible. The woman says she'd like to have a baby, and the guy doesn't say no. And what even drives me more are these ladies that you know, like the forty somethings and the and who they choose to go to a sperm bank or whatever. It's horrible. I, I mean, I see it firsthand what these kids go through. But mostly, by year. the way, most. You don't choose to go to a sperm bank, and you know why? Because a sperm bank can't pay child support. Right. So they would rather go to the next best thing, the Craigslist sperm bank, the Match.com <laughs> sperm bank. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, Tom, but, you know, you're doing a good service for our young guys. I don't agree with everything, you know, but uh, I'd say 99% you're right on, and, you know, after you use that condom, Use the Tabasco sauce, flush it down the toilet, do what you got to do, but, you know, wear it. I agree with you. I agree with you, Ashley. Believe me, I recommend it all the time. When a woman says she doesn't want you using that sticky thing, it's because she wants to feel your wallet. She doesn't want to feel you. She wants to feel your money for the next 18 years and beyond. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.